the last of the uh, four basic continuous review deterministic model is uh, model number four. Uh, model number four is essentially model number three, but we will allow shortages. Again, in order to understand model number four, we need to graph uh, its inventory level. So we have our x and y axis again. And we will start again at a, an arbitrary point. And as we move to the right, we are we will be uh, we will be using our inventory. We will be consuming our inventory. So we will be consuming it at a rate of a. Upon reaching zero, upon reaching zero, what will happen is because we will allow shortages, we will still move down. Up until a certain point. Okay, and at this point, we will decide to order Q. And because uh, supply is non instantaneous, and in this case, again, we will assume that B is greater than A, therefore, our inventory level will be increasing at the rate of B minus A. And because our inventory level will be increasing at the rate of B minus A. And because we, we were able to incur this much shortage, therefore, the reduction of your shortage will also be uh, staggered at the rate of B minus A. Your decrease in the shortage will also be staggered. And therefore, the increase is also linear. It is at this point zero where you were able to fulfill already all your um, shortage. And uh, assuming that your um, supplier is still delivering, then your inventory level will now be positive. Up until it reaches a certain point again. Okay. And it will go back down again. Go back up etc etc now to identify your cycle your cycle actually looks like this remember that the cycle is the the time between two orders so where are you ordering you are ordering at this point so let me draw a line and your next order is at this point okay which means i will be able to uh, divide our our entire cycle so that this entire cycle is t but i will be dividing it into four components four parts i'll call this t1 i'll call this t2 this part t3 and this part t4 okay and then I will define this part to be H1 and this lowest part to be H2. H1 is the highest inventory that you will achieve and H2 is the highest uh, shortage or the planned shortage, highest planned shortage that you are um, going to have. Okay. One last uh, variable that I need to... Um, to define is s what is s s is not seen in this graph okay in the same way that q won't uh, won't be seen literally in this graph but uh, what is s s is the remaining pending supply well from your supplier at inventory level zero okay so what does this mean exactly what is the remaining pending supply at inventory level zero so remember that it is uh, during t1 and t2 where your suppliers are delivering your goods and between t1 and t2 you have this point okay you have this point at this point, your inventory level is already at zero because your supplier was delivering 
and you were consuming, but because B, B is greater than A, therefore, you were accumulating uh, inventory. But during T1 time, your accumulated inventory was being used to fulfill your shortage. So at the end of T1, that is the time where your shortage, your planned shortage of H2 was uh, fulfilled fully. Okay, so at this point in time, your inventory level technically is zero. But of course, there are still uh, supplies or, or inventory that uh, are not yet de delivered by your supplier. And that is why uh, in T2, your inventory level is still increasing. But at this point, how much inventory was not yet delivered by your supplier? That is... Yes. Okay? Uh, maybe to, to correlate S with our model 2, if you remember model 2, we have this graph. Okay? And if you remember, this whole thing is uh, Q. But we also define this upper part to be S. Okay? Technically, the S here is the same as your S here. Why? Because at this point in time, you, uh, you accumulated S minus Q uh, shortage, okay? But because you ordered Q, you were able to fulfill this part of your shortage. And at this point, at this point, uh, the supplier is still going to send you S units. Except that for model 2, your supply uh, is instantaneous. And that is why uh, the, the supplier was able to deliver it right away. And therefore, this line shoots up. However, in this graph, in this graph, at this point in time, at, at inventory level 0, there are still uh, inventory that is not yet being delivered. And and uh, how much that is, that is equal to S. In order to come up with the total cost um, model for uh, model number four, uh, we need to be able to find uh, formulas for H1, T2, T3, H2, T1, T4, and eventually T in terms of Q and S. Uh, I, I won't explain this in video anymore because uh, you will be able to see a copy of my notes how I, I was able to derive all of these things. Okay. Now, given, given these uh, formulas, let us now come up with the total cost function for model number four. And in this case, your total cost function will be in terms of Q, S, and T. Your total cost function will still be composed of the uh, regular uh, components, no? your fixed cost, your variable cost, your holding cost, and your shortage cost. So again, if you see the cycle, this is your entire cycle. And within the cycle, you will still incur one ordering cost or one fixed cost. Plus, for your variable cost, it will still be the unit variable cost C times the order quantity Q. Plus, for your holding cost H, uh, if you see, this is the area in the graph where you are holding inventory. And therefore, you need to multiply your H by the area under this triangle, which is one half. Base is uh, T2 times T3 times H1. Okay? Plus, for the shortage cost P, you need to multiply the area under these two smaller triangles. Okay? And as you can see, technically, because this is a continuous review model, it, it just continues. And you will be able to see this, this uh, tri inverted triangle 
no? For you, uh, this inverted triangle, and all you have to do is get the area of this triangle and multiply that to your shortage cost. Okay? So the area of this inverted triangle is 1 half times the base, which is T1, plus T4, times the height, which is H2. And then you divide everything by uh, by T. Okay? And because we already have these formulas, then we can just simply uh, substitute them. So K divided by T is still AK over Q plus CQ over T is still AC plus <clears throat> In this case, well, uh, we just have to do it one by one. So H times one half times T2 plus T3 is S over A times H1 is B minus A over B times S. So B minus A over B times S and then divide everything by Plus, for the shortage cost, you have your P times 1 half. Then multiply by T1 plus T4, which is Q minus S. So quantity Q minus S over A. Times H2, which is equal to this. So B minus A over B times Q minus S. And then divide everything by again um, I forgot T can be substituted by Q over A so we can multiply the uh, this thing by A over Q so let, let us do that A K over Q plus A C plus in this case let me just combine H over 2 quantity S over A quantity B minus A over B times S times A over Q. No, that's for the division by T. Plus P over 2 times Q minus S over A times B minus A over B times Q minus S. And because T is equal to Q over A, then we can manipulate or uh, substitute P here with Q over A and we will be able to get AK over Q plus AC times everything. But upon dividing by T, we multiply its reciprocal, which is A over Q. And we do the same thing here. So we have the same thing multiplied by A over Q. Now, we can simplify this to be AK over Q plus AC plus um, A will get cancelled. In this case, we will also cancel A. Uh, S and S will become S squared. So we can simplify this to an H. Okay, H S squared times B minus A. H S squared times B minus A all over 2BQ. For this part, we have P Q minus S squared times B minus A. So P Q minus S squared times B minus A all over 2B and Q. What we now have is our total cost function in terms of Q and S, which we can now uh, do partial derivatives in order to get our Q star and S star.